you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so I think uh, uh, we just to begin, we do receive research yeah, grant support from uh, uh, Alcon Laboratories. IFR calculation has now been sorted out quite well with uh, uh, the newer calculators. And I think so for post-refractive, the main surgical challenges are in post-RK and in post-ICL cases. In post-LASIK cases, probably cataract surgery itself is not much of a challenge. It's mainly the calculation which is a challenge. And what are the challenges that face us in a pre case of previous RK is that first of all, although the refraction right now may be hyperopic, this patient is a myopic eye. The eye is myopic, so it's a collapsible globe. And there are chances of uh, incision gaping that occur. So always try and choose a location from where there is gap between the incisions. For example, if the RK, two RK cuts are here, try and plan your side port incision in between the two so that there is less distortion or less damage to the side port incision. Similarly, the main port incision, try and do it in the area of maximum gap between the two RK cuts. However, it's not possible in all RK cases. Like, for example, in this RK cases, there are probably un in uncountable cuts. Then maybe you can try a s slightly scleral uh, incision, which you can do after doing a peritomy or uh, 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 directly through the conjunctiva so that you avoid uh, damaging the uh, actual RK cuts. PECO emulsification in that sense, uh, you have to be careful that you don't distort your probe very much. So use an appropriate incision and an appropriate sleeve because any amount of excessive hydration or excessive manipulation at these incisions can lead to gaping of these RK cuts that are occurring. Also, you want to make sure that you remain as posterior as possible and therefore l lower fluidic parameters because more and more bringing up to the center, these corneas are also likely to be quite weak and they show up more post-operative corneal edema compared to others. Fragment removal, uh, of course, uh, follow the same principles uh, of uh, in the back phaco emulsification as much as possible. Uh, and make sure once again that you don't use your right hand very much. So use your left hand to make all the manipulations to mm, bring the fragments to the center. Uh, make minimal manipulations with your probe to avoid uh, any distortions of the RK cut and the incisions. Uh, I IOL insertion, uh, uh, you try and you don't want to try and enlarge this incision very much because wound gaping uh, can be an issue. And even with a 2.2 or a 2.4 incision, in the end, it's very important to check the integrity of the incision, uh, and it's not just the size. For example, if you notice a large leak, this incision is unlikely to be uh, very self-sealing, and you may want to even suture a 2.2 or a 2.4 millimeter incision in an RKI. Uh, but uh, with uh, uh, appropriate parameters and in the back phaco emulsification, you can achieve these results on day one. But like I said, do not hesitate to you know suture and it, this may require multiple sutures. This may not only require suturing the incision, it may also sometimes require suturing the RK cuts. For example, here, the RK cut was gaping here, the main incision was gaping. So you need to make sure that you suture all of these wounds and forewarn these patients that your eye is abnormal and we may need sutures. So don't hesitate and keep an ego issue of not taking a suture uh, even if you felt there was a need for suture. And look at this case with an extremely abnormal cornea already uh, you know, pre-decompensation of the cornea occurring. No matter however much you may try and keep the incision scleral or as posterior between the two gaps, some of these incisions, even during phaco emulsification, you can notice that there is this huge wound gap that has already occurred, and that leads to wound leakage and instable phaco emulsification. So at, at times you may have to even intraoperatively before you reach the stage of cortical aspiration, you may have to suture these wounds uh, to make sure uh, that they remain sutured. And this is that same patient before we could actually go to IA. We first had to suture this area of uh, excessive RK wound gaping before we continued with the surgery uh, because that was not allowing us to do that. So this is the cortical removal and everything is remaining, but so many of the RK cuts had started to gape so much uh, that the chamber stability was a compromise. So sutures need to be taken at any point of time and appropriate low use of fluidic parameters. And in the previous uh, challenge, in the previous ICL, the IOL calculation need, uh, need not uh, uh, change. Uh, you can also do a femtosecond cataract here. You can notice the ICL has been detected very clearly and there's a good vaulting. It's just that the patient was 10 years down the line and certain myopic patients 
do develop okay. cataract earlier. So you can do a ca capsule or excess and nuclear fragmentation with an ICL in place. You need about 3.2 millimeters of uh, incision to remove this ICL, uh, although this is quite flexible. Uh, but uh, about 3 millimeters to 3.2 millimeters is a good incision size to remove it. And uh, you can notice how you can use a McPherson or any forceps and it flips out very easily. Now the only challenge is remaining is that your phaco tip and sleeve are typically designed for 2.2, 2.4 or 2.8 incision. And now you have a 3 millimeter or greater than 3 millimeter incision with a higher chance of wound leakage occurring. So one trick that we have found useful is that we suture, we take one suture at the edges of, on both edges of the incision. So that will reduce the size of the main incision. And now you can use this, you can use your same uh, phaco uh, probe and the phaco sleeve and you remove the sutures at the end before or after IOL implantation as the case may be, as this was a three-piece IOL being a very high myope, it was a minus diopter uh, lens, uh, and therefore we anyway needed this large three millimeter incision to place the IOL in the back. So I think these are uh, some of the pearls that uh, we find useful, uh, that is to try and suture the edges of the incision of a uh, uh, case of ICL and take as many sutures as required on gaping RK cuts, gaping RK wounds, uh, including the main incision or the RK incisions as may be necessary. Thank you so much.